Hello everyone, once again it's the Samus here. Today I just want to speak to you why there is no reason for people to divorce. Now, why do I say that? Well, first of all you have to look at the reasons why people divorce. In fact, before you look at the reason why people divorce, you must first look at the reason why people marry. People marry because they make each other happy. I don't think there's any other reason why a man will marry a woman unless he finds happiness in her. And there is no any other reason for any woman to marry a man unless she finds happiness in the man. You see, and the reason why a man has found happiness in the woman is because the woman did things to make the man happy. And the reason why a woman will marry a man is because the, the man did things to make the woman happy. You see, so that is the beginning of the relation. That is the beginning of people who come together and say, let's get married. And if it's the man who proposed the marriage, and then the woman says yes, and they get married. So, so if at one point in a man and a woman's life, even if it was just six months or a year or two years, if at one point these two people were happy in their marriage, that is reason enough to say that there is no reason for them to divorce in the future. No matter what, they, what kind of problem they find themselves in. And, and people might say, but what if he cheated? What if she cheated? Well, the thing is that cheating, as in you know, any problem that arises in the relationship or in the marriage which may lead to divorce, is not a real problem. It's not the real cause of the divorce. It is just a symptom of what is going on in the marriage or what is not going on in a marriage. You see, because in the beginning of every marriage, every spouse or every prospect, you know, husband or wife, do things, will go out of their way to do things to impress the spouse. You see, so a man will keep himself in tip-top shape, keep himself looking good, going to the barber, to have his hair cut, a woman always, you know, clean and everything. So everything that a woman does at the beginning of the courtship stage or at the beginning of the marriage or just a few months of, after they got married will always be to impress the husband, will always be to impress the prospect spouse. The same thing if, as, as a man does. You see, so... At the beginning, it's always about what can I do to make this person happy? What can I do to make this person interested? What can I do to make this person focused on me? And in most cases, it is always things which the husband or the wife does to make the woman happy. It is always, you know, the things that the, the wife does to make the, the husband happy. So as things go, I mean, as time goes, you know, people get tired because, you know, the human being always finds reason to make everything look common. Because the beginning when something is new, a human being will always, you know, go out of his way to try to enjoy, to try to be happy. You know, so at the beginning of the relationship, it's always the husband is giving. The wife is also responsible by giving back. You see, the problem becomes when the marriage gets older, five years, 10 years, 15 years, passes, and then from there, because the husband now is seeing the woman as just a common woman because she is, he has seen her so many times, naked and not naked. He has seen her, you know, wearing this dress, that dress, that underwear, this underwear. And then he just starts to see her as common. Then he starts to do things to make her, to keep her interested, to keep her focused on what he's doing, you know. So because the woman also does not have anything to react to. That means he has no reason to give back to the husband. Because you have to realize that's how it works. If the man starts the relationship in terms of doing things, showing himself as a good enough man to be loved by a woman, the woman always reacts in such a way that he gives back. You see, and when the woman gives back, the man feels like, well, she is the woman and he wants to marry her because the woman gives back. You see, so if both of them start doing things to show their love, to express their love, that is the cause of what 
the symptoms are going to be in the future. You see, that is the cause of what the symptoms, because a lot of people, there was once this, you know, this, uh, this video that I, that I saw on, 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 on Facebook, a man was saying that sex is overrated. Sex is underrated. And sex comes from a place of desire. You see, a woman will want to have sex with a man because she desires him. A man will want to have sex with a woman because he desires her. And then it is sex which makes the woman and the man married. Because it is sex which makes the woman and the man married, so that means it is sex which makes the woman and the man which keeps them married. Without the sex, there is no marriage, really. You see? So without a man and a woman having sex, there's no sex. Why? Because they cannot be one. The only way men and women become one is through the sex. So without the sex, they cannot be one. So because sex is a physical activity, I'm just giving example in terms of how cheating, you know, is a symptom of what the problem is not the problem so if people divorce because of cheating they did not cheat because of the cause because of a cause they dis i mean they divorce because of a symptom and because they dealt with the symptom that means that if they divorce and go and marry other people they will be carrying the cause with them and they're most likely to divorce again that's why i'm saying that there is no route to divorce there's no cause for people to divorce so because, like I was saying, the sex is in a physical activity. That means a man must be in good shape to be able to have sex with a woman. Because if he's not in good shape, not only may he not desire his wife, he, even when he desires with his own heart, he may not be able to perform it. Because he will need stamina to perform it. You see? So... Because that does not happen. Even with a woman, if a woman does not look after herself in such a way that she makes herself desirable to the man, the man may not desire her because she is not desirable. She lets herself go. She eats everything that she wants. And that she's no longer sexually attractive. These things have to be said. You cannot, as a woman, let yourself go eat everything that, that you know, that makes you gain weight and then from there then your husband does no longer desire you so in terms of the husband not desires on wife now he's gonna start looking outside for women who are desirable that's when he cheats but when he cheats the woman might divorce him and he thinks that you know i mean she thinks that she divorced him because of cheating no you divorced him because there was no sex in your marriage. That's why he looks for sex somewhere else. Because think about it, during that time, during that first few months of the marriage, when you were having sex over and over again, every day, every night, do you think that your husband could have thought about sleeping with another woman? Of course not. Why? Because he was getting it from you. But because he's no longer getting it from you, for whatever, either he does not desire you, or either it's not, you know, and of course, the only reason why a man will not have sex if he was not designed, it's not, you know, it's because he, he's not designed his wife. That's why he wants to have sex with another man. The same thing as when a woman cheats with another man. It's because now he's no longer, there's no sex in the marriage, he goes to find someone. So the cause is not a woman or a man cheating. The cause is because there's no sex in the marriage. Meaning that if you are going to reinstall sex in the marriage, there will be no reason to cheat. That means the marriage could be restored. You see? So the question now becomes, what causes this lack of sex in the marriage, which leads to a man looking for sex outside of the marriage or leads to a woman looking for sex outside of the marriage? So it is up to the husband and the wife to figure it out. You see, if it's a health issue, then deal with the health issue. Don't divorce a man because he cheated. Don't divorce a woman because she cheated. Look at the cause. Why would they look for sex outside? Because the truth is that a woman does not go outside to look for love. Because if he was looking for love, he would just divorce you like that. Because that's what she's looking for. 
she that's why she goes outside to cheat to have sex and then she hides it because that's that's the only thing that she really wants and she's not getting in the relationship the, in the marriage the same way as a man who cheats goes out and looking for sex and hides it why because that's the only thing that he that means this man actually does believe that you love him and or this woman does actually believe that you love her but she's not getting sex because sex is very important for marriage she goes to get it outside or he goes to get it outside but if you were to fix the sex issue there would be no reason for him or for her to look for his outside which means that instead of cheating instead of a woman going outside to cheat on his wife i mean on on her husband or instead of a man going outside to cheat on his wife what should happen is that a man must raise with the wife and say but you know you know love we haven't had sex in a week and they there's not even desire to have sex what's wrong you see that's where the conversation starts we haven't had sex in a week what's wrong i mean like remember when we were like three months of the marriage we couldn't stop ourselves I didn't even want you to cook. I just said, no, I don't want to order takeaways. So that's what the, the conversation starts. You see, if you see that, well, maybe it's because of the day. And then you can start researching what causes a lack of sexual desire. There was lack of, you know, intimacy in the marriage. So you see, you look at the symptoms, what this is what causes, and they say, oh, that's our problem. Then you fix it. Then there's no need for divorce. Do you see that? So the problem is that, as soon as something goes wrong, which is a symptom in a marriage, people divorce over a symptom, not a cause. That's why most couples who divorce and they go and become couples and marry other people, they're most likely divorce again. Why? Because they carry the cause around with them. Even in terms of financial issues in which maybe there's no more money or whatever. If the man and the woman married because of a financial transaction if the woman married the man because of his money well that was not a marriage to begin with it was a financial transaction it was about the woman sexually satisfying the man and the man giving her money i mean yes and that's it that's why that one that's not qualified to be addressed it was not married to begin with that's why as soon as the man loses the money the woman goes if it was about a man who married the woman because she had a sexy body and then now she's old does no longer have the sexy body which of course will happen to every woman well that was not a marriage to begin with that's why it's not that's not deserve to be addressed i'm talking about people who married because they loved one another and because somewhere along the line in their marriage they could not find happiness within the marriage in each other they decided to do things which they were supposed to get out, I mean, to get in the marriage outside. And when the other one found out, they want to divorce. I'm talking about those people who love one another. People who marry for money or marry for sex, that's not marriage. That is just, you know, what people do. You know, they married for all the wrong reasons. I'm talking about people who marry because they love one another. You know, people who marry because they love one another deserve to have their marriage saved. They deserve to be coached. They deserve to be cancelled because these people made it out of love but somehow they lost you know the meaning of their marriage along the way because sometimes if you do something over and over again for a long time or if you've been in a situation for a long time you you, you may lose you know the vision for it you may lose the cause for it and, and end up doing the wrong things those these are the people that i'm talking about in which i'm telling them there's no need for them to divorce you see you cannot say that because your husband has cheated and say suddenly you want to walk out i'm not saying you cannot get hurt or you cannot feel hurt you cannot feel hurt but the question that you have to ask yourself is this what will lead my wife to go outside to sleep with another man while she has enjoyed sleeping with me for all these years what will lead my husband you know to go outside to find sex somewhere else, while she, he has enjoyed sleeping with me for all those years. You have to ask why. Because the thing is that sex is not just going to be enjoyable just because a man is muscle or just because a woman is younger. That's not how it works. You see, if it was like that, then young people won't be breaking up. Sex is mostly going to be enjoyable when it is with the person that you love. Because it is oneness which is most enjoyable. You see, so 
That's the thing that couples have to ask themselves. They, they have to ask themselves. What is it that drives a man outside of his marriage, marriage to go and have sex somewhere else? Or what he can have it in this marriage? What What is it that drives a woman to go outside to have sex? If he can, she can do it in the marriage. If you can ask those questions, that's what you. That's how you're gonna find the root cause of your problem. You see, so it's easy to walk out of a marriage. That's that's very easy. You know, just walk out. But you have to understand that how many marriages are you gonna walk out of, and you know, you know eventually you're gonna be by yourself because once you walk out of a marriage. You start even to be afraid of getting married. So what you're gonna do now? You're gonna just you know sleep with man or sleep with woman, and that cannot be enjoyable because you wanted the comfort of having a husband or a wife in your house, being exclusively married to them, only sleeping with them. So you're not used to that. At the end, you're gonna have to isolate yourself from all men of all women because you cannot find happiness. But the thing is that you had happiness. It went wrong, but instead of fixing it so that it could be right again, because it used to be right, you walked out. So you you cannot walk out of a marriage based on a symptom. You have to know the cause. And once you find the cause, you're going to realize that, is this something that I can fix? Is this something that I can talk to my wife or my husband about? If then they agree that, you know, we can try to work it out. Because the thing is that people think that, you know, to save a marriage is to just stay. No. If you want to save your marriage, no, your marriage, no matter what the problem, you first have to find out what the problem is. So that you're not just saving it by staying. Because if you're saving it by staying, it's going to reoccur. Because you're not looking at the problem and fixing it. But if you want to save your marriage, you must think about what is the problem? How can I solve it? And when you're solving it, you're saving your marriage. But if you think that, okay, he cheated and say, I'm sorry, it was wrong. But you're not trying to find out what the cause of the cheating is. You're just staying because you think you're loving. He's going to cheat again. But when you ask a question, why? If a man is no longer enjoying sex with you, you must just come out and say, it because I'm no longer enjoying it. Why? What is it? What, what would you want me to do? Then if what he wants to do, if it's physically possible, then you do it. He's your, I mean, he's your, he's your husband. Who else can you do these things with except your own husband? She's your wife. Who else can? Because the problem is that, you know, a man may think that just because a woman wants to switch, you know, angles and all that, now that means she's probably cheating. No. She wants to enjoy. And who else can she do this with, with except you, her own husband? Because if she was to go out and do these things with another man, you're going to be hurt. You see, God gave marriage and sex in the marriage to bring joy and pleasure to the husband and the wife. If the wife feels like she can get more pleasure if she does it like this and it doesn't hurt you and it's not immoral, then why would you not want to do it? Do you not want to bring pleasure to your own wife? If it's the husband, do you not want to bring pleasure to your own husband? If you want to do that, then do it. Because the thing is that if they already had the idea of doing it and you don't want to do it and it's not going to be painful for you and it's not going to be sexually immoral, they're going to end up doing it with someone else. And if they do that, you're going to be grieved. And you could have prevented this thing by doing it with that. And you probably could have found joy yourself. You see, so marriage is about making each other happy. You know, if the person wants, you know, you know, they don't want their steak to be overly cooked, then you don't overcook it. Because if you overcook it, they're not going to like it. And they're not going to like your cooking because they're not going to like your cooking. They're going to hate, you know, they're going to start hating having supper of you. And they're going to start having supper outside and outside there are other women. And they're going to start enjoying the same thing that they enjoy and eventually conversation with your affair. It's the same thing. If your husband does not like his food overly cooked, then overcook them to make him happy, to keep him, to keep him interested. You know, if your wife likes it that, you know, if it's, it's raining and it's cloudy, she wants to stay in bed and cuddle, do this with her. That's what she loves. That's what makes her happy. Because 
the thing is that in in every relationship whether it's a family or a religion or whatever as long as the person is happy they stay everybody is kept in any kind of relationship by happiness that's why god is the god of joy and pleasure he's able to keep all these creatures all these angels all his believers happy and keep them believing in him because he makes them happy that's the thing if you can understand that that the relationship is about making the person that you love happy you you have the key to relationship to any kind of even your own children if you keep them happy they're gonna stay they're gonna stay in the house they're gonna enjoy being children to you but if you cannot make them happy they're gonna start looking outside for better parents than you that's why some children enjoy spending time with their uncles or their aunts more than you with your own their own parents why because their uncles and their aunts make them happy that's how every relationship works really so if a man wants to keep his own wife you know interested you know and loyal you know and focused in the relationship all they have to do is to make the wife happy and in some extent you don't even have to try to figure out what your wife wants just ask her how do you want this thing and if she says like this and you do it like that and if she's happy what else what else could go wrong because how are you gonna know ask the person how do you want this how do you want your steak how do you love your chicken i like it fried and you fry the chicken and if it's fine and he's happy then the marriage is gonna go on and on you see and then because the person is happy there's no reason for them to look outside for happiness and because they never look outside for happiness there will never be anything that will make them want to divorce you see the problem is that people think that someone owes them to make them happy they don't realize that if you start making a person happy they are most likely to respond in a way that makes you happy it's like people who believe that they deserve to be respected but they do not realize that if you treat people with respect they are most likely to treat people with respect i learned this personally for myself every time that i meet people and i address them as sister or brother it's almost like i compel them to call me brother and i, I, I you know I, there are people whom i've known for months or for over a year they don't even know my real name why because all they call me is brother why because that's what i call them sister brother and they respond the same way so it is the same the respect is love it's impossible to respect the person you don't love and it's possible it's impossible to love a person you don't respect so if you love a person they're most likely to respond in a way you know that is love that brings the love back to you that means they give back they they take back your the love that you have given them and and give give it back to you and because they do that that means that they're happy in the love that you have given them that's why they give it back and because they're happy they will never have any reason to do anything outside of this marriage and because of that there will never be any cause or any grounds for divorce so it's, it's just some relationships are just supposed to be very simple but we complicate them because we think that as a husband you think that your wife owes you something you think that your wife owes you happiness and the wife thinks that her husband owes her happiness she doesn't understand that, that um, they don't understand if, if they they become the one who starts the thing start the love thing start the love cycle it will always come back to them and when it comes back to them it means that the person is happy in what they've received and because they are happy they will never want to leave you see that so that is that i have to say about this topic why there's no reason for married couples to divorce and if you have any you know comment that you want to say about this topic you can leave your comment below and if you enjoy content like this, you can subscribe to my channel so you can always receive content like this. Thank you for listening.